Let's talk about real quickly a, a series of uh, topics on here, but I, I want to really elaborate on some deep subjects here. How do you deal with the depths of deception? Deception, it can come to you in an obvious form. Meaning like somebody can come to you, you never met them before. Uh, they say something to you. And you can obviously catch it that is not God. I mean, it's obvious deception. But what do you do with the deception that is more clothed? is more intense and it's more confusing. Let me give you an example. What do you do when somebody comes to you and tell you I am a bishop but they have come to deceive you? They come to tell you advice and counsel that's wrong. The deception that uh, 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 somebody come to you and say, I'm a pastor or I'm a prophet and the, and the information is wrong. How, what do you do when the deception is more, is more high in deceit? Rather than obvious deception, like uh, deception that you can look and you can easily discern and say, man, this is not right. It's like so, like somebody come out the bushes right now and say, can you come over here? Like, you know, off the jump that that person that's telling you to come over here, that you shouldn't come over there. Like you could discern that deception like it's so obvious. But what do you do with the deception where Satan masquerades as an angel of light? That deception is not really a place where a lot of people have been victorious. Because that deception requires actual quality time with the Holy Ghost where he can prepare you so when the time comes, you don't get tricked. Do you know that there are people that say, the Lord told me this and they're lying? And the Lord does not kill them. Now, the Lord doesn't kill them. Well, why wouldn't the Lord kill them? Number one, the Lord will let them live. Because in that moment, you have a chance to see whether or not you are being faithful to the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you're being faithful to the word of the Lord that was spoken to you before they showed up. So, so the situation at hand doesn't even call for them to die while they're lying on God. The situation at hand calls for whether or not you're going to show that you have been faithful to the word of the Lord in season and out of season. And you're not going to let somebody come and corrupt you from that word. So. You notice the woman in Genesis, the serpent is saying, half God said. But the woman in Genesis, she's conversing with the serpent. The information that the serpent is saying is information that she shouldn't even be in conversation with. So I want you to see this. The woman wasn't deceived. When she went, go partake of the tree. She was deceived when she opened up access to even respond. Wow. See, I'm telling you, there's levels to deception. Judas wasn't deceived when he took the 30 shekels of silver. Judas was deceived when Judas was put in his hand in the bag months, years, weeks before. 
Judas was deceived when Jesus was teaching, but he wasn't letting it get inside of his soul. Like he was just like, all right, I hear that, but yeah, all right. Thomas wasn't deceived when he said, I need to see the nails in Jesus's hands. He was deceived when Jesus was talking years ago about, I shall be delivered up by the Jews to be crucified. After three days, I shall rise. And Jesus is talking about all these things. Thomas was already deceived back then. I'm showing you something about deception you probably never saw before. Vashti wasn't deceived when the king told her to come and show herself. She was deceived a long time ago when she started questioning the king's authority. She already was looking at King Ahasuerus talking about, you know, he think that everybody going to do what he say. He think that everybody just going to follow everything he tell him. If he, if he say it, we got to do it. She was already deceived. Potiphar's wife was already deceived, not when she asked Joseph to sleep with her. She was deceived when she started thinking that while Potiphar was working, that she had leeway to do things behind his back. It didn't start with Joseph. See, you have to understand, if you take a note, write this down. Deception has a history. My goodness. Whew. Deception has a history and it doesn't begin in today. It began yesterday. You just start, you start seeing more clear evidences of it today. But it started yesterday. Deception has a history. So oftentimes people look at a, a, a deceptive moment and you're like, well, okay, the person got deceived because they just missed the mark. No, no, no. They was missing it long time ago. But see, this is the buildup. It became a volcano and now the eruption of deception happens. Deception has a history. So when you officially get deceived, you didn't just get deceived in the moment. There was a time way before where the deception was already going on. But see, now it built a whole mountaintop. It was in the valley first. The plateau, it, it started going up higher, higher, but now it's a mountain. Now it's a, it was a hill, now it's a mountain. Now it's a cloud. Now it's in space. Now it's in the heavenly, the heavenly realms. Now it's in your psychological. So, if you look at all through the word, Samson wasn't just deceived in one day. The Bible said that Delilah kept coming to him over and over and over. It's a gradual process. He didn't just get deceived in one moment and say, man, dang. And boom, just one mistake, bam, deceived. No, he was deceived long time ago when he thought that Delilah's soul was more important than God's soul. He had already that concept. That's why it was wearing down on him because his philosophy was this woman's soul is more important than God's soul. So that's what the war, you struggle when you prioritize something more than the Holy Ghost, that's what struggle is. So when somebody say, I'm struggling to do something, what are they really telling you? I, I, I really love God, but I can't stop doing this. No, no, no. Let's break this down what you're telling me. You just told me that you actually love something so much that you're having a problem giving God what he wants. That's what you told me. You notice that wicked people, their major slogan is God knows my heart. That's why you're going to hell, baby. <laughs> That's why you're going to hell. You can't, you can't enter into heaven with that type of heart. God not going to receive you into eternal life with that type of heart. Because there's going to be Lucifer part two. 
I think that was Ezekiel where he said, I take out of you a heart of flesh. No, no, a heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Why would the Lord say he's going to give you a heart of the flesh? Heart of flesh. It didn't say the flesh, heart of flesh. Well, why would God say he's going to give you a heart of flesh if the flesh is bad? Because flesh, if you cut your flesh right now, you feel the pain of it. If you bruise your skin right now, you feel it. If, if somebody cuts you, shoot you, you'll feel it in your skin. So the, when you get a heart of flesh, it means that you'll be able to feel what God feels. The tangibility of God's atmosphere will be revealed to you. That's why I was telling you the other day, you're not a monster. So godly sorrow, 2 Corinthians 7, 10, godly sorrow, you're supposed to feel godly sorrow because you're not a monster. So if you do something that goes against what God told you was right, you're supposed to feel it. You're not supposed to try to medicate yourself and say, no, 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 I'm not condemned. No, no, I don't want to feel this. No, I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field. You're not supposed to try to overshadow that process of feeling bad because the Holy Spirit, when he gives you the heart of flesh, your flesh is a place of feelings. So the heart of flesh is not a heart of the flesh because the heart of the flesh means you're still in strife, lust, fear, worry. But the heart of flesh is you are now feeling God's reaction concerning this. You're feeling God's mentality concerning this. You're feeling God's way of thinking concerning this. So here I want you to really think about this. What will you do in the hour of greater deception? You have obvious deception that comes into your life where you could obviously track it. Somebody comes up to you from the bushes, come inside the bushes. You know, no, I'm not going inside no bushes. So you dis you disrespect their instruction. But what will you do if somebody come up to you and say, hey, I'm a bishop. Hey, I'm a prophet. Hey, I'm an apostle. Hey, I, I'm a pastor. What would you do in the greater levels of deception? Because the Bible told us that when we look at uh, how the Pharisees was moving, they was going to people and telling them, don't listen to Jesus. And they were saying, hey, I am a, I, I, I'm a leader. I'm a teacher. I teach. This is my synagogue. I, I hold this amount of congregation every, every Saturday, every Sunday. I, I teach here. So what was going to keep them from heeding the credibility of that person because they just announced to you that it was credible. If I come up to you and I tell you that I am a president and you looking for laws to get passed, I have just made myself credible for you to talk to me about a law that you want made passed because I just told you I was a president. This is how I, this was my intro. This was my introduction. So how is it that you don't heed me with law changes? Because I just told you that I have the power of veto. I have a, a authority as a president. What I'm telling you is what are you going to do in deeper deceptions? When people come to you in the name of the Lord, but they're not in the name of the Lord. Because in the greater levels of deception, when people lie to you, they'll tell you the Holy Ghost told me to do that. The Spirit told me to do that. And they're lying. Saints, one time, one time, We see that young prophet is hearing the old prophet say, I saw an angel appear to me and told me to tell you to come back to my house. God had already told the young prophet not to do that. Don't eat or drink in this place. Don't 
Go out the same way you came in. Don't eat or drink. Don't eat or drink fast in this place. The old prophet comes up to him and tells him, I saw an angel tell me to tell you to come. Come back to my house and eat and drink with me. He obeyed the old prophet. And when he sat down after finished eating, the old prophet said, thus saith the Lord, because you have disobeyed my voice. You, you didn't follow my instruction. You shall be eight. You shall die. The young prophet was ate by a lion. The Bible said his carcass was laying right there. That means his bones, like his frame. He was dead. He got ate up by a lion. He died a horrible death. This prophet has succeeded so powerfully. He was a powerful man of God, very powerful prophet, because the word of God said that the king went go stretch out his hand to, you know, kill him, torture him, fight him. The Bible said that the man's hand withered immediately. That's how powerful this prophet was. His hand withered. And then what's the other aspect of the text? The king went go offered him wealth and riches from his house. And you know what the prophet said? No, nah, I will not take nothing from your house because I already am faithful to the word of the Lord. That's not the word of the Lord for me. I'm not supposed to take nothing from you. This is a faithful prophet of God. So now he gets to this old prophet and all of that faithfulness, he compromises it. All that righteousness that he done built up on his account. <laughs> he been doing things right. He been overcoming the devil. And now he's in a greater realm of deception. This the nitty gritty. See, he wasn't in this realm of deception before. He's in the greater deception. And he falls. And he dies prematurely. And he hurts God. And the bigger part of the text is not that he was killed and ate by a lion. The bigger part of this text is that he ate up God's trust. He ate up God's happiness. He ate up God's confidence in him because he was willing to put the word of the Lord aside to entertain something that obviously contradicted it. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. How everything is set up is that the word of the Lord comes to you in clearness. Because the Holy Spirit already know that there are realms of Satan where he pits on God's clothes. The Holy Ghost knows that there's realms of Satan where Satan dresses up as King Jesus. Satan dresses up as Michael, as Gabriel, as a messenger. So the Holy Ghost always gives you clarity before the greater deception comes. So you say, well, prophet, well, how would I catch this? Let me show you. This is so profound. The greater deception does not come until God has established clarity of the word of the Lord. If you take a note, write that down. The clarity of the word of the Lord will always stick first. Then God will permit the greater deception. The greater deception. The greater deception. He won't do it before. What is greater deception really about? These are higher ranking demon spirits that have more wisdom on how to deceive 
the human nature, the human race. You're not always facing demons that are experts of deception. The experts and the masters and the philosophers and the professors of perversion and the professors of deception, those type of principalities, those spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, they are reserved for a time after you have heard the clear word of the Lord. Not before. Wow. Do you understand Matthew chapter 4? It's telling you that the devil astral projected Jesus to a high mountain. Jesus was taken up by the spirit of the devil. Man. Jesus is being astral projected by the devil. Jesus could easily say, I'm going to do what you say, because if, 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 if I wasn't supposed to do what you say, how would you able to take my body just now? I was just in a low place. You took my body up on a high place. Jesus could do that. Jesus has a will. Jesus could say, wait, if you can ask, you just translated me. We was in one place. So you must be God. You must be the real God. Maybe my father is not really my God. Maybe, maybe you are my God after all. <sighs> Jesus could have said, maybe you are my God after all, because last time I checked, Ain't nobody ever astral projected me since I've been on earth. Who translated me from one place to the next? Nobody. Maybe I've been wrong all along. Maybe my father, the great God Jehovah is not my God. The one that gave me the power to create the worlds. Maybe you're actually greater than him. Maybe you're the true God because you just astral, you just took me on a high place and showed me the whole world. How could you do that? This could have went on in Jesus' mind. We dealing with the greater deception and seeing the greater deception. You might say, no, that when it happened to me, cause I know better. No, no, no. It happens to you actually because you do know better. You qualify for the greater deception. You never heard that before. You don't understand when you have been taught properly. You qualify for greater deception to oppose you because this is your rank in the spirit. You know enough to counter a spirit that is strong. A spirit that has more wisdom in deceiving. A spirit that has successfully used different tactics and devices to destroy others before you. You qualify. And see, I, I want you to understand, and that's why it's, it's so dangerous if you're underneath your prophet and you're not understanding what the apostle, what the prophet is given to you years and months and weeks because you don't understand what's entering into your soul is changing your rank. You're engaging it. You're sowing into it. You're listening to it over and over again. It is inside of your blood. You qualify for greater deception. So when witchcraft show up, if you lose to the witchcraft, you can't say, well, I lost because I didn't understand what was happening. No, you did understand what was happening, but you did not place a value on the level of grace was entrusted to you. You didn't place a value on it. So when the time comes, you're dropped and fall by the wayside. Not because you didn't have the ability to overcome, 
but you didn't respect the ability to overcome. You didn't respect the glory. Now, this conversation real deep. I want you to think about it. Man, this conversation is so deep. Man, I could teach five hours on this. This is so deep. Do you understand what I'm telling you? The reason why Michael is trusted as an angel, because Michael could have yielded to the greater deception. Lucifer had powers like God. Lucifer had abilities like God. You know that angels have high dimensions of power entrusted to them because the book of Jude says, I think that's Jude chapter one. There's only one chapter in Jude. It says that there was angels that were reserved in chains for the day of judgment. Why did God lock them up and kept Lucifer out? Why didn't God lock Lucifer up too? That show you that they had greater powers than Lucifer. God knew that these were God angels. They had power to destroy. They had power to damage. They was dinosaur-like and angelic beings, creatures. They followed the greater deception of Lucifer. And God said, I'm going to let Lucifer, I ain't going to do that, but I'm going to lock them up. I ain't going to let them out because I know what they can do. Are you listening to me? Huh? So Satan is not the greatest fallen angel. You don't lock up the least, you lock up the greater. Me and you both know that there's criminals out roaming right now. They're not in jail. So you tell me why some are in prison serving life sentences. They are, they have actual documentation of all the people they done killed. There's some people right now on earth, they probably kill about two people, leave it alone. There's people right now in prison killed by 10 people, 20 people, 15 people, 5 people. They, they in prison serving a life sentence. They locked up. They won't let them out. Do you know why they lock them up? Because they fear what they will do. They respect that they are capable of performing the violence, the crimes. God locked up these angels because God knew these angels are carrying an impartation from me that is similar to mine's, and I don't want them to now use that ability, the fact that they have chosen to obey the greater deception. Oh, this powerful. Oh, this powerful. Oh, this powerful. Mm, 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 mm. The glory of God flowing right now. The glory of God flowing right now. The glory of God flowing right now. When the greater deception come, you have to disregard what somebody is saying and stand by what God has already said. When the greatest deception show up, you have to ignore what someone is showing to protect what God has shown. When the greater deception show up, you have to use submission more than you ever used it before. Because in greater deception, demons do not move because you say no. Your no actually empowers them to come again. With a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth and a seventh and an eighth and a ninth and a tenth attempt. You're not talking to me. The greater deception is very hostile 
and it's very frequent and it's constant. It might last three months. It might last six months. It might last six weeks. It might last. You don't know. Bible said resist the devil. You don't resist somebody that throws in the towel immediately. They need to see that you solidified and bona fide. They need to see that you mean business. They need to see, see that you standing on the solid rock. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand all of the grounds is sinking sand. All of the grounds is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the grounds, all of the grounds is sinking sand. All of the grounds is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the grounds, all of the grounds is sinking sand. All of the grounds is sinking sand. Man, I, th 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 there's lyrics to this song. Who know the lyrics to this song? I used to sing it, but I, I, I haven't sung it so long. Oh, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. See how the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, powerful boy. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the grounds is sinking sand. All of the grounds is sinking sand. I'm gonna sing this. I'm gonna sing this one more time. My hope is built on nothing less. Are you listening? But Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust. Are you listening? I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All all other grounds is seeking sinking sand. All other grounds is sinking sand. You see what the song's saying. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. Deception. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the grounds is sinking sand. All of the grounds is sinking sand. My prayer to you is that you'll overcome the greater deception. That's when people come to you and tell you, the Lord told me, and they're lying. And the Lord not going to kill them because it's an opportunity for you to manifest the information of the word of the Lord that was t spoken to you before they ever showed up. Remember, the father doesn't kill the devil when the devil says, bow down and worship me. The father doesn't kill the devil. When the devil says, 
The word of God say it is written. Cast yourself off of this high place. He will command his angels concerning you. The devil is lying. The father doesn't kill the devil. This is God's son's chance to stay, to say, I'm sticking close to you, Papa. Papa, I love you. And this is how I keep my way in you. This is how I show you. I've been listening to the word of the Lord. Why do you think that the Lord kept saying all through the gospels, whatever I see my father do, that's what I do. You think the great God Jehovah on the throne looking like, yeah, that's my boy. That's my boy. I couldn't get this with first Adam. I couldn't get this with Moses. Couldn't get it with Elijah. Couldn't get it with Jeremiah. Couldn't get it with Ezekiel. I couldn't get it with, with, with Abram. For, I, but this one, I can get it all the way. You think that when greater deception come, that God is going to kill the greater deceiver. No. This is an opportunity for you to show the Lord. I'm sticking to the word of the Lord for my life. Sometimes you might look at opposition in life and you don't even understand the opposition is not even about the opposition. The opposition is about your position. Don't opt out of it. 